Thank you. Okay, Denise, if you want to put Salt Lake all on the screen, just Salt Lake alone, and I think we can get started. <laughs> Denise, are we ready? She said we're okay if we just... Yep, yep. He's go for it. Just hit a microphone. <laughs> Okay, this is Michael Sears, Finance Director with USDB. Um, I sent you several emails about today's training. It's Medicaid training and it's related to the time study. Actually, the time study that started today and that will end on Tuesday. Um, and also information going forward. There are some significant changes with how we're going to complete the time study, specifically who participates in the time study. And so we have John Mahoney from our time study service provider and also Michelle Christensen from the State Department of Health here to explain how we fill out the time study and the codes that we should use. So you should see John and Michelle on the screen. And I'll turn the time over to them. Thank you. Uh, thank you for extending your day. Uh, I want to... <coughs> Uh, thank you for extending your day. Uh, I've been working with the state of Utah since 2000, uh, and uh, together with all of the school districts in the state and with the state's help, we've generated approximately $40 million so far to date. So it's a very important program. Um, it's two-sided. The federal government has <laughs> separated this program Not into loud. two different sections. Louder? Yes. yes. Louder, okay. That's right. Uh, the federal government has separated this program into two pieces. One is direct services. The other is administrative cost. On Michelle's side, she does the direct services. The time study that we do will be used to calculate what it costs to provide services federal government wants to make sure that you don't make money on their program. So your cost must exceed your revenue. So it's important that we do the time study so that we can quantify how much time is spent on health related services. The other side of the program I'll call administrative. It is the coordination of the service and once you do the time study I will take the time study percentages, apply it to cost, and then we'll bring additional money to USDB. So it is a very important program. Who will be in the time study? We will be making some changes. It should be all of the health-related servers and also paraeducators and teachers. It is for the K through 12 and preschool people who are working in preschool and K through 12. It also will include outreach itinerant educators that are currently working in other districts. So it doesn't matter if it's a USDB IEP or a school district IEP, you will be participating in the time study so that we can identify your cost associated. Um, I want to try to make this uh, an easy program. It has some nuances. It's not real easy, um, and we understand that. It's not perfect. So it's a 15-minute time study. It's done three quarters of the year. Summer is off, and it is a five-day per quarter time study. <coughs> We've implemented this so that you don't have to do 100% reporting, and I know that wouldn't be fun. So my goal today is that you leave here uh, having an idea of what is expected and what codes you should be using. So I encourage questions because it's these questions that come up with nuances that will clarify which codes you should be using. The important thing is, who are you with, what are you doing, and what is the purpose of what you're doing? So when you ask me questions, I probably will ask you questions back, and I need to know what you're doing and the purpose and who you're with. Okay. 
I'm going to start with the um, administrative claiming activity codes. Some of them I'll go through fairly quickly and others I'll focus on because you're more likely to be doing those. Now, <coughs> as you code, you will not be using every single code because not all codes apply to you. So we're going to start with activity code A and B. A and B are similar. One relates to Medicaid, the other relates to non-Medicaid. So let's go to activity code A. Use this code when performing activities that inform potentially eligible individuals about non-Medicaid programs. So that could be Social Security Administration, SSI, TANF, jobs, employment, but this is just handing out information. This is not working with the agencies, it's really just handing out information. Activity code B is the same thing, but it relates to Medicaid only. And the best example is the third bullet there, handing out Medicaid brochures. It's very unlikely that you're going to be doing this activity. But in case there is anyone that has that job, like a social could, worker. Excuse me, can you slow down just a little? We're trying to write down what the codes are used for, and we're not super typers. <laughs> sure, sure. You should have okay, a handout. You. you should have a handout. There's not enough. Okay. Email. You should have received in your email uh, these activity codes. But I'll slow down. Uh, so activity code B, back to B. This is for Medicaid, and it's handing out information on the Medicaid program, a brochure. Typically, this would be someone who does this as part of their job, and it would typically be a social worker. I, I think it's unlikely any of you will be doing this activity but I want to go through them all. Activity codes C and D are similar. D, I'll cover D first. D is helping a family apply for Medicaid. Very simply, helping them fill out a Medicaid application. This is also probably rare. There are some schools in, in Utah that do actually have workers devoted to helping out families with Medicaid eligibility. Those workers would use code D. In this case here, it's unlikely that you will be helping with an application. But the code is there, I just want you to know what it is. Back to C. C is just like D, only it relates to the other programs other than Medicaid. The best example I can think of would be uh, someone helping a student, maybe it's a post-high student, apply for SSI. That's probably the only example I can think of. But if you were to assist a family or student with an application for um, another program, or possibly uh, TANF, cash assistance, any other programs, food stamps, that would go under C. Any questions on A, B, C, or D? Yes. Are these other programs specifically federal programs? Like they're not going to be anything local? The question is, one. are these just federal programs? And the answer is no. They could be state programs as well. So maybe if we're helping a student um, with a college application or a Yes. Voc re vocational rehabilitation application. Perfect examples. Voc rehab application or college application would be a C. Moving on to E. This is where... Do we also have a question here in Ogden, please? Okay. Um, I work with the post-high students, and you said earlier that this was a K-12 through study, and then you just talked about post-high, so really quickly, is post-high part of this? Yes. Um, I'm assuming. Yes, um, and I'll explain the distinction. Uh, the services are billable only K through 12. However, under the Medicaid administrative side, uh, side 
up to 21 is also included. So on the administrative side, we can claim your activities that you're doing up to age 21. Good question. Question in the back? Yes, um, we have a question as audiologists, helping them apply for, to different organizations, not, usually not, they're usually private charities so that they can get funding to buy hearing aids. Yes, that would be a, a C. You have to repeat that. Okay. The question is, if if you are if you're an audiologist and you're facilitating applications for private funding, is that how would that be coded? And the answer is C. Okay. Moving to E. This is where uh, a good chunk of the educator time will be. It is purely academic. When I say academic, it's separate from the health related. What we're asking educators to do is to view themselves as an extension of the therapist. So because you are providing health related services under the direction of, you are considered part of the health related cost pool. So we need to make a distinction between <laughs> education academic activities versus health related and IEP related activities. So E, providing classroom or individualized instruction, including lesson planning, testing, correcting papers, general supervision, monitoring student academic achievement, conferring with students or parents about academic performance. Any questions? F1 and F2. This is direct one-on-one. -on -one. Excuse me, Ogden has a question as well. Could you please hold? Sure. She's getting to a mic. Services for interpreters. We're going to get to that in a little bit. Um, the purpose of your, it depends on a few things. If you are a teacher or if you're the therapist, and if you are providing the therapy itself, or if you're there purely to translate for the therapist. There's a separate code for translation. We will get to that. Any other questions? Okay. So F1, this is IEP related health services. One on one or group providing the services contained in an IEP. The health assessment and evaluation as part of the development of an IEP conducting the assessment, evaluations, testing, and preparing related reports, providing the therapies, OTPT speech, physical therapy, personal care, anything that's in IP, diapering, tube feeding, audiology, what else, Michelle? That's it. That's it, okay. Question. Yes. Um, as an educator, I'm teaching the kids, but I'm teaching them working on their speech. Right. So I have a conflict here putting down E or F1. Okay, F1. so we're, we're, we've got one 15-minute unit that we are measuring. Do the best you can to figure out how much time is spent really focusing on the speech part versus the math assignment. Try to make a distinction, and it's not a perfect science. We ask you to do your best. For example, we, we have students that might have behavior goals, and maybe three of the four units in that hour could be spent addressing a behavior goal, and only one unit related to education. So try to break it up in your mind, how much time was spent on pure education versus how much time was spent on the IEP goal speech, as your example. Motor skill. A good example is if you have an art class. An art class by itself sounds like it's not reimbursable. But if you're addressing a motor skill with a specific student in an art class, then that should be an F1 because your focus is the motor skill. Another question? Yes. 
this gets this is our hardest thing as audiologists. We travel to rural sites. We test children that are not carrying the US <coughs> IEP, but they want a hearing test on them. And they're students and they're within a district. Does she have a microphone? Uh, no, there's no <laughs> way we can get there's no way we can get to a microphone. Uh, the question is that yeah. you are you are driving to rural areas and you have a student where you are doing a test. We're audiologists. Audiologist yeah. test. And there is no IEP. There is an IEP, but not carried by USDB, carried by the district. Oh, okay. That is immaterial. So for our purposes, there's an IEP, and that's all that matters. You are servicing an IEP that's held in a district, but the USDB is expending money for your services. So the question was, um, does it matter if the IEP is in a district rather than USDB? And the answer is no. Uh -huh. You don't need to know that. You still have kids who are on IEP, you test. We, we test some kids who are not on IEPs. And then there are a lot of children referred to us. They're in early intervention. They're in uh, uh, Head Start. They're, they're just doctors refer them because they think they're having hearing problems. What about all those? Zero to three is not covered. Okay. So the question is, how would you code your time? Okay. But, but, for, the, but for the school age kids who are not on IEPs but are being tested by our audiologists. That's an F1 as well. Uh -huh. Even if there isn't an IEP yet, if you're doing testing and evaluations on them, that's an F1. Excuse me, could you put the camera on the interpreter so that the people who are deaf can see the interpreter? Continuing with F1. What? A, okay, we we're still have another question. Okay, another question. There are concerns here. about they need a hearing test because they're concerns about they're not responding or they're not speaking well or something, or they didn't pass the school screening, and we we see them then. Can we? And their hearing turns out to be normal. They're not going to be an IEP. What happens then? The question is, uh, is the testing that you're doing, even though there, there won't be any need for any hearing devices or assistance, uh, nor an IEP, how should you code your time? The answer is F1. It is immaterial. You're doing testing. Regardless of whether or not there's going to be a need for the service or not, or an IEP, your testing time is still going to go as F1. Thank you. Uh, finishing out F1, providing counseling services. There may not, is there a lot of that here? Counseling services? Psychology. Okay. To treat mental health or substance abuse conditions. That's also, so your uh, mental health services would also be an F1. <coughs> Let's go to, yes. Question. We have a question in Ogden. Yes. It, is orientation and mobility an F1? Yes. Absolutely. Is orientation and mobility an F1? Yes. Another question here? Okay, F2. Question? Yes. Okay, half of my students are in diapers. But if it's not in their IEP, so do I, uh, as far as changing their diapers and taking them to the bathroom and potty training them, so is that F2? Correct. F2? Is it part of personal care? Is it part of personal care? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but it's not in the IEP. Is it an addendum to the IEP? Is it in a health related? No. It's an expectation no. that you will potty that child. It's F1. And it needs to be added to the health care plan. 
No, no, no. Oh. I'm more working with three-year-olds. I'm not changing oh. all of their IEPs. No, zero to three. Zero to three. Yeah, they're three. But three, they're three. Are, three to five are in our preschool. This is Blandy. Um, I just had a question. You touched a couple times on zero to three not being included. But how do we code our day when I'm an itinerant teacher that does both? I do school aged and zero to three. So do I just leave that blank if I'm doing a zero to three? If I'm driving to a home visit, how would I code it? If you're working with a zero to three, code that time as E. It won't count towards the Medicaid side. Thank you. Okay, but three and up does. Lee, this is Ogden. Could I make a suggestion? <coughs> Can the interpreter sit where that other lady is and then just trade <laughs> out the speakers? Because when this gets recorded and shown out to the world that all the rest of the people are going to watch, they're, it's not going to work too good. We're going to close caption it. Oh, she wants Michelle and the interpreter to trade. Michelle, can they see if she sits down? I'll have to move it. But I, we're videotaping back here. Do you tell her we're videotaping here, not just the Ednet site? Because that's what Pam's confused with. Pamela, we're videotaping at this site here. So we're going to leave this room's arrangement as it is. <laughs> All right, but a lot of people were going to watch it over the thing. Thanks. <coughs> I have a question in the room. Okay, thank you. <laughs> question? I have a question. Uh, you said something about needing to have a health care plan for diaper changing. Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> Basically, it's a personal care service. So if you don't have it as part of the health care plan or part of the IEP, then it's a non-billable service to Medicaid. So when you're doing your time sheets, in order to document your full day, it's best to have that in your care plan or in your health care plan. You'll get reimbursed if it's in the plan, but you won't get reimbursed, it won't be a billable service if you don't have an IEP or a health related plan attached to an IEP with that service. One more question. One more question. Zero, zero yes. degrees that are enrolled in our program at Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind. You know, either the preschool or our our home, our caring infant program. Our, we can't we can't make that an F one. What is that? It's actually early childhood. It's another. Pro actually, I'm over that other program too. Okay. Yeah. So it's already being claimed somewhere else. Oh. So the audiologist right. can't, can't claim that. Either. I'm expert to three. Preschool, kid 21, yeah. would be part of your study. But what about, but PIP, we, do we need to tell PIP then to say, by the way, we tested Georgia? No, you know, they get a daily, there's a daily rate for that, so no. You just, whatever you're doing right now, you will continue to do. It, it would be part of this. So if we spent three hours in our day testing PIP children, what do we put? It'd be E. E. The rest of the, everybody else didn't hear her question. Oh, sorry. She says if she spends three hours of her day with a PIP student, then how would you mark it? And that would be an E. That's being billed as a separate program. Okay, activity code F2. This is likely going to be nurses. Uh, the best example is giving insulin. Uh, services that are provided free cannot be billed to Medicaid. So administering first aid, not related to health-related service, or doing prescribed medications or injections is an F2.
perform, performing routine or mandated child health screens included to, but not limited to vision, hearing, dental, scoliosis, and EPSDT screens. So the vision hearing screens that are done across the board um, to general student population is not considered reimbursing if the nurse is doing that activity. So any service that's provided free to students <laughs> is not billable under Medicaid, and that's an F2. So the distinction, the easiest distinction between F1 and F2 is, is there an IEP? If there's an IEP with a health-related service, then it's F1. Other health provided, typically by a nurse, uh, that there is no IEP for would be an F2. Travel. Let's talk about travel. Travel and paperwork relates to the activity you're doing. So if you're going from one school to the next school to provide therapy, the time associated with your travel should be coded F1. Paperwork and documentation relates back to the purpose of what you're doing. That should also be F1. Activity codes G and H. One is for the non-Medicaid, one is for Medicaid. This is unlikely that any of you will be doing this. It is arranging for transportation for some other program or for a Medicaid reimbursable service. The only time you would have a code H is if you were in the rare situation I finding transportation, arranging transportation, let's say, to a student's primary care doctor. So this is very, very unlikely. I don't expect to see any of these in the time studies. I and J, these are important ones. This relates to the earlier question about translation. Upton has another question. Sure. For other related activities like extracurricular activities that you're providing direct instruction or short-term programs for the blind, visually impaired, and teachers are providing instruction during that time, but it's not IEP related, how do we code that? That should be key. Thank you. So a good chunk the majority of the time for most <coughs> teachers and most paras will be educational. Yeah. There are exceptions. There may be one-on-one -on -one paras um, that will be spending most of their time on F1 and very little time on E. So back to translation. I'm going to do activity code J. I have a question. Okay. I have a question in Ogden. Yes. Um, interveners, they are one-on-one -on -one with their student working on IEP-related communication goals. The majority of their time is going to be F1. The majority. Well, what's their other time? <laughs> well, I would assume that the other time they're going to be working on education and academic kind of activities. Is that correct? Absolutely. Turn on the mic. Yes, for the interveners, I would expect a very, very high percentage of their time to be F1. Question here. All right, thank you. Another question here. Yes, OK. <laughs> So I'm talking about me. I'm going on a home visit, and I'm actually driving. So is that F1 or is that G? What is the purpose of your travel? I'm driving to teach them in their home. You know, their life, the life skills and whatnot. Think about the majority of your time. Is it teaching educational? or teaching life skills? I would say life skills most of the time, correct? Right? Then F1 is correct. 
So if you are a teacher, are you, is it life student, skills? For student. Somebody? Okay. Student. Yeah, I'm going to go teach the parents. No. <laughs> it's the student. That's an F1. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, translation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go through J first. We're going to give you an example of J. Um, employees who provide translation services for Medicaid activities should use J. So it's arranging for or providing directly oral and signing that assist an individual or family to <coughs> access or understand care or treatment. Interpreters being used by medical staff. So let's provide an example. Michelle is a speech therapist. I'm a teacher. I'm there not to provide the service, but I'm there to communicate, provide the interpretation to the student about the therapy. So Michelle would code her time as F1. I would code my time because I'm not providing the therapy. I'm there strictly for interpretation. So I am going to code it as a J. Now, let's say I'm still a teacher, I'm in the classroom, I'm working with a student on motor skills. Unless not a Yes, it is. So I'm working with a student on motor skills, and I'm also translating at the same time. That is considered an F1 because you are providing the service. You are an extension of the therapist in the case. Um, I, go back to I, for employees who provide translation for other reasons other than Medicaid or health-related service. So it would be oral or signing services that assist the individual to access and understand the other programs like disability, social security, food stamps, other programs. So I do expect there will be some activity code J. Activity code K, in L are identical. L is program planning, policy development, interagency coordination related to medical services. This would be director level staff doing these activities. So those of you that are educators or therapists, health related, uh, you will not be using codes K or L. Activity M and N are also identical with the exception of one is Medicaid and one is not Medicaid. Let's go to N. Code N, when conducting or participating in training or seminars for outreach staff regarding the benefits of the health or medical related services. Best example here is the last one attending a presentation by the Utah State on augmentative communication devices. It's actually a training specifically for Medicaid on how to deliver services better. Going back to M, this is for the, all the other programs, and the best example is participating in or coordinating training that enhances IDA child find programs. So whether you're giving the training or receiving the training, you would use code M or N. Question? Yes. So tonight, we're starting the study today. Tonight's training would be M. Yes. So we would all code? You, could, you would code M from 3.30, or actually the time it took you to get here as well. The time it took you to travel to get here, plus the full length of the time study training. Yes, question. So attending training to learn about new hearing aids and their the new circuitry on the hearing aids that would program. be that programming. Would be a, that would be an N. That would be N. Yes. Excellent example. What was the question, please? If you are attending a training as an audiologist about the new hearing devices or software, software programming, um, how would you code that? And the answer is with your time traveled and the time at the training, you would count that as an N. Okay. Yes. 
since there are a lot of audiologists, one thing on an F1, <laughs> oh, two, sorry. I just keep hearing that question. Um, if you're an audiologist and you have to take a hearing aid and go back and work on it, mm -hmm. that's an F1. And the same would be true for other therapies. If you're doing research for a specific student on a particular piece of equipment, that would also be F1. So if you have to take the brain out and take it back and work on it for a while, that's F1 also. <laughs> Just check them. Uh, I'm going to move to O and P. Uh, P is an important code. Uh, this relates to the referral coordination and monitoring of the Medicaid services, which in this case is the health-related service. All of you who are doing health-related services will also have some P time. P is in fault. It is the coordination. It's used when making referrals to planning or coordinating the delivery of Medicaid covered services. This includes discussions and meetings on the health needs of a child and the process to determine what services are needed. You never need to concern yourself with whether the child is on Medicaid. The time study is about how you spend your time, not the eligibility status of the child. Working with families, other staff, and providers to arrange for coordinated services that may be required as a result of screens, evaluations, or exams. So all of your health-related services fall under this category. So if you are coordinating with, if you've got a teacher or a paraprofessional that's talking with a therapist, or you may be communicating with the parent about progress, lack thereof, all of those communications internally about the service delivery and the need to change it, that's all considered P time. So if you have F1 direct service time, you're likely to also have that time associated with coordinating that service. Yes, question? <laughs> we coordinate sometimes. So I see a child, and the parents ask me about some further services, and I know that that's appropriate with children's special health care needs. So I spend some time speaking with their be a person and even the doctor maybe how would that okay so i think what you're saying is you you're involved with the family on other things other than school health related services mm -hmm. but the need for other services which might include children primary but, care yeah with a psych another speech therapist that uh, developmental pediatrician. Uh, okay, so that is coordinating a Medicaid service, so that is a good example of a P. Question. Uh, participating in an IEP, would that be P or F1? If you are a therapist and you are talking about the therapy itself, the progress, lack of love, change, that's an F1. Okay. So just for that part, the rest of the meeting would be the P. So if you have an IEP meeting, let's say it's an hour long, and your portion, if you're a therapist, and your portion is 15 minutes or 30 minutes, you code 15 or 30 as an F1 and the remainder part is a P. Okay, gotcha. Good question. Did everyone get that? Okay. I have a question. No. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm a teacher. So suppose a parent asks me about um, changing the transportation. Is that a P? Tell me more about the transportation. So maybe they're out of town and they need to change, um, they're going to go on a different van or they <coughs> want to know where <coughs> they can drop off the kid if it's in another home or something. Is it a school van? Yes, it's a school van. <laughs> that would be an E. That's an education activity. If you were arranging for transportation to a primary care doctor or another provider outside the school system, it would be a P. Okay, uh, let's 
go down further. Participating in meetings or discussions to assess a student's need. It includes informal hallway or lunchtime discussions. Mm -hmm. So it's formal meetings, it's informal meetings, it's phone calls to parents, any communication among therapist, teacher, paraprofessional, supervisors. Referral for medical or physical exams and necessary evaluations. Referring a student to Medicaid covered service, whether or not that service is in the IEP. Includes the time preparing, writing, and following up on the referral. Discussions concerning the need for motor, speech, hearing, or other screening. So if there's an identification of another need, that communication among those parties is considered a P as in Paul. Monitoring and evaluating the service components of the IEP. Arranging for health, speech, behavioral, other assessment as part of an evaluation or reevaluation. So you can see there's a connection between this code and the code for direct services. If you, if you provide services to children, activity F1, you engage in P as well. A service is not provided without planning, referring, discussing, and monitoring of that service. Any questions? Yes. A question was just asked me. If I'm an outreach teacher. Outreach teacher, okay. And I'm providing some academics. That would be an E. Correct. But academics if I am e. teaching Braille. E. Well, E. Okay. Well, the, this is this is a tricky one. The purpose of the Braille is education, not health related. Unless the Braille was to explain or communicate motor skills or something that was another health related service. Does that happen often? Uh, very often. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot of our TBIs do. But I would think the majority of it would be academic purpose. Can you make a distinction between academic and another health so related? Blake, excuse me for interrupting. Ogden's requesting that you move the camera down on your interpreter because we're only seeing her fingers and head so that she can sit and rest for a minute. <laughs> Shouldn't we be spelling you off? Yeah, hang on. We just had one volunteer. Code that as a uh, F1 slash P, will you? <laughs> well, that's a good question. For each 15 minutes, we can't have any slashes. It's one code or the other. Whatever it took the majority of the time. That's a good question. Yes, question. For clarification purposes, if I have a student who has uh, OT goals or handwriting, and I work with that student on handwriting, that is an F1. Correct. So if you have a student with handwriting uh, as an OT goal, uh, and regardless of what function you're performing, whether you're a therapist, teacher, or para, you would be an F1. So F1 reinforcing F1. a goal that's really Yes, reinforcing a goal, and that's very good language. Okay, the last one is Q, general administration, which is paid time off, lunches, and breaks. Uh, reviewing school or district procedures and rules, attending school or unit staff meetings, with the exception of this one. This one's Medicaid, so this one's going to be N, as in Nancy. Uh, performing administrative or clerical activities, general supervision of staff, reviewing technical literature and research to keep current in your area of specialty. Now, however, in that one, is if you are researching a specific piece of equipment for a specific student, then that is not Q. That is part of F1. Question. One more. I'm sorry, you're a lot of questions. I know. We know so many. <laughs> Part of our job is to order the equipment we need. I mean, it's like the earphones, the batteries, the the materials to make things that we do. Writing up repairs. Yeah, writing up repairs, but 
what would that be? Q. It's more generic. It's not related to a specific student, okay. so it's Q. Okay. So the question is, if you are ordering supplies, uh, and it's equipment, supplies, batteries, uh, even though it relates to the program, part of Q does get allocated in my calculations. So part of that Q time will get recorded. So please code that Q. Any other questions? Alicia, you need to stand up. Okay. Can you see my head? Never mind. I'd like to. Move the camera up, I guess. Okay. 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 That I think you're going to likely be uh, what I expect when I look at the coding. So all of your health-related servers, your SLPs, OTs, PTs, psychologists, audiologists, uh, probably the majority of your time, and maybe a very large majority of your time, will be at one direct service, one-on-one -on -one or in group. You're also going to be working with other um, coworkers. So you're going to be doing some of that coordination of that health-related service. So if you're talking with the paraprofessionals, teachers, parents, um, other staff, supervisors, you're going to have some P time as well. So the majority of your time will be F1 and P if you're a related server. You might have some educational as well, and you will have some general administration, which is your time off and your breaks. Nurses. I know there are probably about 10 or 12 nurses. Uh, they have a few more codes that we'll add in. They'll be doing the F1 direct services for the IEP related services with goals. They might be doing some of the um, um, first aid, uh, insulin, medication, that's an F2. They'll be coordinating as well, coordinating those health related services, that's a P. Uh, it's unlikely they'll be doing anything with the Medicaid, but it's a possibility. They might do some school-related educational, but I imagine that's a very small portion. And they would also be doing general administration as well. Teachers, paraprofessionals, the majority of your time is going to be E. In most cases, with exceptions. You will also be doing F1. And in many cases, your F1 will be greater than your education. If, you're, if you are working pretty much one-on-one -on -one with a student, your numbers for F1 are going to be way up there. You're yeah, going to be doing... Less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. Okay. Uh, referral okay. coordination, monitoring of Medicaid services, and general administration. Um, we do have one more thing we'll be introducing, not this quarter, but the next quarter, which is narrative descriptions. The federal government wants us to make sure that you understand the codes. So there will be a sample of people, about 50 per quarter, that we will ask to do a narrative form. And we need you to complete the form for one day out of the quarter. We'll tell you which day that is. It needs to have a complete thought and it needs to have the code. Please give me the what and why. What you are doing and why. Providing individual therapy, monitoring progress on IEP goal. Um, here's some others. Assist toileting, tube feeding, assist eating. Call parent regarding related service. If you just say call parent, I won't know if that's coded right or not. Please be brief but give me a good visual on exactly what you were doing so I know you've got the codes right. Coordinated meeting with team and parents. Things like that. We don't have much time. Are there any other questions? Yes? Um, as I recall, there's only eight hours. Correct. Available. Thank you for bringing you that up. You start at the beginning of the day. Start at the beginning of your day. And, and whether you work 10 hours, 12 hours, you have to stop at so, 8 hours. So if you're doing Medicaid-related things late in the day, we don't Move them up. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Please do the first 8 hours. We'll make it easier that way. Yes? Monitoring progress on IEP goals is what? Monitoring progress on IEP goals is 
Yes. You want to answer that? Well, it's a P unless you're the therapist and you're actually writing up a care plan, like a plan for someone to follow through with, then it would be an F1. Question three. Report writing, which is a lot of work, huh? F1 probably for you. Okay. okay. So report writing, paperwork relates to the activity you're doing. So you think about what you're doing and why you're doing it, if it relates to the health-related service, and you are a service provider, therapist, it's going to be an F1. Question from Richfield. So as a consultant, would we be considered more of an F1 or a teacher under an E? What, you're doing. what, are you, what is the purpose? What are you doing? What is your activity? We're a related service implementing the IEP goals. Okay. We're not really a classroom. Okay, so you would probably be an F1. Without more information, that's what it sounds like. Yes? If the IEP goals are academic as opposed to therapeutic, then the working on the IP, writing it or whatever, monitoring progress would still be E, correct? It would be E if it's purely academic. If your IP is purely academic, it would be E. Explain the question. Yes, the question was, if you have an IP that's just purely academic, how would you code the time working on the IP? And the answer is E, education. The time associated uh, that is billable under Medicaid is only for the health-related services. You also code for kids uh, who you are serving who are on 504s, not IEPs. No. 504 <coughs> students are not billable students. So their time is E. And their time is E. Their time is E. Yes. One more. Uh, we have an audiologist who speaks Spanish. She sometimes helps the other mm -hmm. audiologist with a Spanish-speaking family. Okay. If there is, the question was, if you have uh, an audiologist, but you, it could be anyone who speaks Spanish, and they are there purely for the translation, the Spanish translation, how should they code their time? And the answer would be I or J, depending on whether or not it was the health-related service or some other program. The In your case, it's likely going to be J. The meeting ends now. I will follow yeah. up with additional information. Orm has a question. The, the, it's literally going to cut them off. Yeah. Like, you will cut them off? Yes. No. To say this is the end of the training. Okay, this is the end of the training. Michael will follow up with additional information. Thank you.